Hey, what's going on guys? It's the Double E Guy back again with another video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an active band pass filter. In order to create an active band pass filter, we need first a low pass filter, and we also need a high pass filter. And we're going to be using an op amp in order to do that. So let's first take a look at our parts in LT Spice. If we look at our op amps, we can use this LT1055 op amp. It's ideal and will allow us to find our corner frequencies a little easier. Now taking a look at our op amp, it is a five terminal device. We need to use these terminals to good use. So this positive and this negative right here is used to power our op amp. So let's add a VN right here and a VP right here. Now we need to power our op amp using two DC voltage sources here we can have this at 15 volts and this at 15 volts as well. We're going to want 15 volts going to our VP and a negative 15 volts going to our VN. In order to achieve this, we need to put our VP pin here where we have our plus on top and we need our VN pin down here where we have our negative. We also need a reference to ground. All right, so now that we have this configuration here, we just need to figure out what we're doing with these three terminals. So right here, we're going to have what's called our output, which is going to be the output of our operational amplifier. And then we have a negative and positive terminal here. For a non-inverting operational amplifier configuration, this positive terminal is just going to be wired to ground. This creates, once again, our virtual short condition, where we have zero volts here and zero volts at the negative terminal. In this specific configuration, we're going to have a negative feedback loop coming around here, and we're also going to have another wire on top with a capacitor. Alright, so now that we have these basic wires and our op amp is looking fairly good, we need to add our filters. So let's connect a wire right here. We're going to have a capacitor in series with a resistor. And then because this is the negative terminal, our sinusoidal voltage source needs to come through the negative terminal. So let's add our sinusoidal voltage source right now. We're going to make this a sinusoidal source. Our AC amplitude is 1. Our AC phase is 0. We're going to make our DC offset 0. Our amplitude 1 millivolt. And our frequency is going to be 1 kilohertz. So here we have our source. And now we just need to add the components here. We're going to have a resistor right here, and we're going to have a capacitor in parallel with this resistor on top. So now that we have our basic circuit here, we can see that this is an active band pass filter. We need to add specific values here for our resistors and capacitors in order to create our cutoff frequency on the left side and on the right side. I'm going to be putting in specific values to create a specific gain and a specific cutoff frequency right now. And I'll explain later where I got those values and the math you need to use in order to find those specific values. But for now, this resistor is going to be 10 kilo ohms. This capacitor here is going to be 0.159 microfarads. The other capacitor is going to be sitting at 50.5 picofarads, while this resistor is going to be at 316.2 kilo ohms. All right, the last thing we need to do in order to see our Bode plot of these cutoff frequencies and our band pass filter is to run a spice directive. So using the period command on your keyboard, you can press period and create a spice directive. I'm going to do dot AC, DEC, which is decade, 110 and 100k. So you can see right here we're doing an AC sweep by decade and we're also going to start at 10 Hertz and go up to 100 kilohertz in segments of 100. So if we actually graph this right here we can test our output and we can see our band pass filter in action. You can see at the very top V out we're sitting at about 30 decibels. On the left side, we have our decibels, which is our gain. And then here we have our frequency going up to about 100 kilohertz off screen. 
So how can we interpret this graph? So pressing the V out, you can do a left click on the V out. You can move this around and see different values. At the top, we're at about 29.9 .9 or 30 decibels. Now, if you want to see the cutoff frequency, the cutoff frequency is going to be negative 3 decibels from the peak. So if I create another cursor here, I can go down to about 27 decibels. And this is about 27. And I can see my cutoff frequency is at 100 hertz. In order to interpret this graph, we can see that at 10 hertz down here, we really don't have that much gain. It's about 10 decibels. That means we're attenuating these frequencies down here. We're essentially cutting them off. And up here, we have our band where we're not attenuating any of these frequencies. So this left side right here, because we're killing the frequencies that are lower, this is called a high pass filter. High pass because we're passing higher frequencies. As we get to the 100 hertz range, which is higher frequency than our 10 hertz, we have more gain. We're passing the frequencies above 100 hertz. So that is why it's called a high pass filter. Looking on the other side, we can move this cursor over to 27 decibels on the other side. And we can see that our cutoff frequency is around 10 kilohertz. Now we use these values in order to get this cutoff frequency, but looking at this graph, what type of filter would be here on the right side? If we just take a look at this scope here, starting from the middle and going out to about 100 kilohertz on the right side, we're actually passing these lower frequencies here. And as we get out to the 10 kilohertz, 11 kilohertz, 12 kilohertz range, we're starting to attenuate these frequencies. We are essentially passing lower frequencies here. That means we have a low pass filter on this right side, and we have a high pass filter on our left side. This creates our band pass filter, which essentially means we create a band of frequencies that we want. These resistor and capacitor values allowed us to attenuate frequencies below 100 hertz and attenuate frequencies above 10 kilohertz. So in any real world application, if we just wanted frequencies between 100 hertz and 10 kilohertz, you could use an active bandpass filter right here. And then our op amp allows us to create our gain up to 30 decibels. I'm gonna show you guys how I did the math to find my cutoff frequency for the high pass filter as well as the low pass filter in just a second. So let's hop over to OneNote and I can show you guys that right now. All right, now that we created our band pass filter, how did I figure out the values for R and C for our low pass and high pass filter? So let's take a look at this expression right here. We can use this equation F sub C is equal to one over two pi R thevenin times C in order to find our cutoff frequency, F sub C. So for our high pass filter, I chose to use a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So we can manipulate this equation right here in order to find our C value. So C is gonna be equal to one over two pi times 10 kilo ohms. So we have 10 K right here. And then what do we want our cutoff frequency to be? In our previous problem, I said 100 hertz. So we're gonna plug in 100 right here. All right, so plugging all of this in, we're gonna get our capacitance value, which is gonna end up being 0 0.159 microfarads. So using our resistor value of 10 kilo ohms and then this capacitance value, we were able to get our cutoff frequency, which is 100 hertz for our high pass filter. All right, so moving on to the low pass filter. Something we need to keep in mind is that for the low pass filter in this configuration, we actually need to worry about the gain a little bit as well. So let's say we really wanted that 30 decibel gain peak. And we did get that in our previous problem. So if we want 30 decibels, just keep in mind if we're translating from linear to decibels, usually we have 20 log base 10 of our linear gain a and that is going to be equal to our decibel value so in order to go from decibels to linear values we're going to have 10 
to the 30, which is our 30 decibels, over 20. And this is going to yield our linear gain, which should be equal to 31.62. So in an inverting op-amp configuration, we know that the gain is equal to negative r sub f over r sub 1. That means we know our R1 resistor already. R1 is equal to 10 kilo ohms. That's what we found out right here. So what do we need to plug into RF in order to get the gain 31.62? It turns out if our RF resistor is equal to 316.2 kilo ohms, you can see that this division right here is going to give us our gain of 31.62. This is actually exactly what we need. So now in order to find the capacitor value for that low pass filter at that cutoff frequency, we can do what we did before. And we now have our known capacitor, excuse me, resistor value. So let's do the math for it right now. So first we have our cutoff frequency is going to be equal to 1 over 2 pi times R thevenin times C. We can manipulate this equation so we have C is equal to 1 over 2 pi resistor and then our frequency cutoff. So if we want our frequency cutoff to be 10 kilo ohms, our equation is going to look like this. We're going to have 1 over 2 pi times 10k for our 10 kilohertz and then we're going to have our resistor value right here which is going to be 316 point two K. So given this equation right here, we can then solve for capacitance. This is going to end up being 50.3 pico farads. So in the problem previously, I think I put 50.5 pico farads, but the equation here ends up yielding 50.3 pico farads, which is a pretty small capacitor. And so using this capacitance, as well as our resistor value, which is going to be 316.2K, that's going to give us our cutoff frequency at 10 kilohertz. And it's also going to give us our gain, our linear gain of 31.62, which means we have a decibel gain of 30 dB. And that's kind of how you use those values in order to find the cutoff frequency for your low pass filter and your high pass filter.